I guess that's so what uh, some people call the spirit of Christmas, yeah. Ayanda, in that, you know, there's the magic in the air and the family comes together in such a humongous way. I've reconnected with people that I was close to growing up, but now um, it, it's a different kind of connection. Ooh, 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 Blazer and I spent time, and, and I think this is where we, you know, this was part, one of the milestones in my life is when I got to exile in Maseru, in Lesotho, and I had no one, and he was my family, he was my dad. And he guided me in ways um, that I could not, you know, I could not communicate even today. And some of the people that we shared those experiences with have been calling me and saying, hey, Canada, how are you doing? Because that, that's what they called me when I left to go to Canada. <laughs> that's what they've been calling me ever since. And they say, hey, Canada, how are you holding up? You know, because we all were such a close, close, close community in, in Maseru. And one of our giants in that community has departed. So again, um, you know, even though the times are difficult, even though we're struggling as a, as a country, as a continent, as, as, as a world, we are finding ways of loving each other through all of this difficulty. And the love is just permeating right through all of the difficulties. It's amazing. It is, certainly is. And, you know, you, you speak to the idea of community. We certainly feel that we're part of your community because of the work you do. But that's also because the work you do is incredibly important. You know, uh, performance as a cathartic process helps a nation heal. I wonder, though, whether enough is said about the healing processes of the people behind the work, people like you and many of your colleagues who undoubtedly haven't been spared the adverse effects of this pandemic. I'm so, so glad and grateful to you that you brought this up, Ayanda, because we have been advocating and fighting and begging and pleading for the Copyright Amendment Bill and the Performance Performance, uh, um, the Performance Protection Amendment Bill to be signed by, by our, our illustrious president. We speak of the, you know, how the pandemic has affected our pockets as a general community. Imagine now the artist that is there. And as soon as we went into lockdown, I couldn't work. And when people were allowed to work on Zoom, I still couldn't work because my work involves being in contact with people. I am a reflection of society to society. But if I'm not able to create that environment of society, I can't work. The only thing that would save me in these times is royalties. But the way that the, our laws is, are set up right now, I'm not earning royalties. Now, what that means is that for work that I've done, any future earnings that the producers, the broadcasters ever make, I am taking part in that. So if you rebroadcast a, you know, a, a section of all generations or justice for all or beyond borders, whatever I've done, if you broadcast it tomorrow, I earn as well. And mm. people keep think, saying, oh, I'll pay you through exposure. You know, please pay me. Mm. Pay the artist. I mean, this goes back as, as far as Henry Taylor, famous, famous actor. Watched all over the world. Shaka Zulu is like a Christmas movie in North America. And every time it plays, Henry Taylor does not earn anything. There's no legacies left behind through that difficult, through that beautiful work. Yeah, and you that know, is it's absolutely something that we ought to be giving a whole lot more focus perhaps than we have in the past. And, you know, it certainly yeah. brings to the fore what many people have, have lamented, right? A situation where artists, it appears, get to the end of their careers and, you know, appear to not necessarily have much to show for it, despite, you know, the great work that they've been able to do. As we mark a day like this under these kind of difficulties, what kind of messaging do you think ought to be sent to the powers that be about you know, the plight you find yourself in and the contributions that you continue to make in healing this country? You know, I always uh, tell um, people that my job, the success of my job is, is revealed in you not being able to see me. When you... Uh, at home after a long day, you turn on the television and you don't want to see Nambita, you want to see Mandakazi, you want to see Mawande, you want to see Perluzipo, you want to be trans you know, transformed into a world of fantasy. And that's my job, that is to 
the person that's going to be operating on your mother tomorrow, the person that's going to be in the ICU during these COVID times comes home and expects me to relieve their stress so that they're able to do their job tomorrow. That's my job. That's what I do. But I want you now to see me. I want you to see the mother, Vangile's mother, sitting in front of you. I want you to see a homeowner sitting in front of you needing to pay bills. I want you to see that NetBank does not take uh, exposure, you know, for, for payments. City of Johannesburg does not take uh, exposure for, for the rates. They want money. Pay me the money. But it's difficult for us to be paid the money if the law does not protect us. So the producer is not going to do something that is costly to them if the law does not say, hey, you got to do this. This is the right thing to do. So I think collectively as a country, we need to start acknowledging and respecting the artists and the arts and saying, you know what? You helped me through a difficult time. I was laying in hospital and all I had was the TV. I did not have contact with the outside world. You helped me get through this. That's what we do. Absolutely. That's what we do. You know, we spend so much time following the many characters you bring to us. I'm really glad today we spend some time following, uh, you know, your own personal situation, because that, dare I say, is equally as important. Thanks for your time and your reflections.